Hello and welcome to this next video in our series on Exit Point Integrator or EPI for short. Today we're going to be having a quick look at the steps necessary to set up a user for multi-factor authentication using the Google Authenticator. So to begin with we are going to go into the EPI menu and we will look at the sub menu here for the Google Authenticator. To begin with, we will ensure that our user is set up, ready to use the Authenticator. What you'll see here is I have a profile already set up called EPI Demo. Normally, you would not want to show the secret key as it is similar in many ways to a password that you would not want to share with other users but for the purposes of this demonstration you'll see i've gone for a fairly basic um, key here but i think i can probably get away with sharing with you all um, and if i do a five to display you'll see that um, i have specified which user I have a description for the user. I have the name that will appear within the Google Authenticator. The secret key is here. I've set it so that after a user has authenticated, they will remain so for 3600 seconds or one hour. Obviously, you can increase or decrease this to suit your own requirements and if i go in to edit it let's say that my new policy is that um, a user has to re-authenticate after half an hour rather than an hour you'll also see i have the option to overtype the secret key this can be quite useful if um, the secret key has been shared accidentally and you need to reset it for a user. Um, the pin code that is generated is valid for about 30 seconds. So this option on the right hand side of the screen is for if your system is having any problems, perhaps you don't use NTP or your NTP server is a few minutes out of line with what is expected, you can use this to ensure that your pin code is kept. You can also see that you'll be able to set up alert or deny commands. This can be useful if, for example, you wanted to send out an email every time someone authenticates. What you won't be able to see at the bottom of the screen is um, below the deny command, we actually display a URL that you can use to get the QR code for the user to scan the application. Again, you would not want to share this normally because it will um, potentially allow other users to pretend to be this user and on this occasion I have decided to hide it within the video and when you click on that um, link you will get taken to your web browser and it will display the QR code which I will now put on screen for you. So this is the QR code that I would then need to scan into the Google Authenticator. So let's now demonstrate how you do that. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use an Apple iPhone. As you might imagine, the application is available through the Google Play Store. However, it's also available on the Apple App Store. So if I just go in and search for Google, and you'll see Google Authenticator coming up in the search results. And I'll just click to download that. 
If this is the first time that you're downloading the application, you may get another prompt asking if you want to associate the app with your Apple ID. However, I've downloaded it already in the past, so the only thing I need to do now is tap open. And we now get an introduction to how the authenticator works. If I tap get started, you'll see I can either scan a QR code or enter a setup key. In this occasion, we are going to scan the QR code that I showed you earlier. And obviously that means I have to give Authenticator access to the camera. And you'll see there, even though my camera wasn't particularly well oriented, it has managed to pick up the QR code. And what you'll see is now every 30 seconds, a new six character ID is being generated, which we can then put into the power server to authenticate. And what we will do is um, just verify that is working. So if I switch back to my 5250 session, and for the purposes of the exercise, we will use the watch get command. We will, of course, go into these commands in more detail in later videos. Um, I'm not actually signed in as EPI demo, so I will specify that that is the user. And you'll see it's now asking me for a pin code. I will put in and you'll see here that the pin code is going to be valid for the next hour and if I come out and go back in you'll see that um, the countdown has begun so at 10.47 I would no longer be authorised and would need to put in a new PIN code. In later videos we will demonstrate the optional Windows application for entering your PIN code. And we will perhaps go into more detail on how to set up various interfaces to require it. For example, you might want it over any FTP connections or any ODBC connections or behind menu options on your IBM Power Server. But I think that's enough for now. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any recommendations for other videos you'd like to see, feel free to leave them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be notified when new videos are released. Hope to see you there, but for now, goodbye.